what's up guys Hitchiko Productions is back with another video and today we're going to be showing to you a demonstration of how this banking angle formula becomes a formula used for everyday lives okay so you guys have already known this formula tangent theta equals v square over rg but the thing is how does that formula form and we're going to be answering this question in today's video so without further ado let's get started So the time has finally come for us to derive this banking angle formula which will be based on this scenario of me making a bank turn, you know, like so. So, let's get started. So first, we're just going to be putting this G, which is basically the center of mass. And the center of mass is just, in simple terms, it's just basically a point where the body's weight always acts at this point. You know, the body's weight tends to act upon is actually at the center of mass. And hence, I can put this arrow FW. Now, you can see this weight. It's always going to point downwards, not parallel to the motorcycle itself. Okay? You know, because gravity is always pulling things downwards. It's not going to pull, like, diagonally downwards or something like that. No. So, hence, it's always pulling things down. So, as you can see, the weight is pointed towards the, the road. Next, let's see. As you can see, I am performing, I'm actually tilting my motorcycle towards the right. Now, if I were to ride the motorcycle too fast, I would scare, right? So, I'm going to ask you this question. Where will it skid? Like, how will it fall? Like, which direction will it go when, if I would ride so fast, right? It will be going towards the left of me. So, we need to counter that motion and it's friction, of course. Lah. And friction also, at the same time, is playing another role of another of a major force that's causing me to ride on an imaginary circle, which I guess most of you know already, this centripetal force. Okay, where friction is included. Next, the next according to the Newton's third law, okay, it states that if you have an if you have a force, there will be an equal but opposite force. Okay, so hence you have this reaction force at the point of contact. Okay, at the point of contact, and hence you have this FR. All right, FR, which is the reaction force. Now, let's take those. Let's take the distances because we'll be dealing with moments later. So first, we'll take the perpendicular distance between the reaction force and point G. That is A. Let's just call it A. And let's take the perpendicular distance between the 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 road itself and point G as H. Now, with all of those variables considered, it's time to get stuck in. So first, ask yourself, is this motorcycle falling? Okay, as you can see, at this point of time, it is not falling. So I can clearly say that the summation of moments about point G is equivalent to zero. Right? When I say the summation of moments equals zero, that means all forces, all the, the moments are balanced, both in the clockwise and in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay? That's the principle of moments, by the way. So, we have three forces involved, centripetal force, the weights, and the reaction force. However, this weight has, this weight have the perpendicular this have moment about point G? Definitely not, because you know, that's where weight is being acted upon. So hence, 
we don't include f we don't include fw in our calculations okay it's an fc and fr so fc let's recap moment is force times perpendicular distance to the turning point so centripetal so if the force goes first fc multiplied with the perpendicular distance which we called it as h which i believe it's clockwise equivalent to we have fr multiplied with a all right and then we can further substitute with a mathematical definitions of these two uh, forces whereby fc as everyone should know is equivalent to mv squared over r now fr again like i said earlier according to newton's third law there is an equal but opposite force i mean if there's a force like this is going down there's a force going upwards which is equal in magnitude so fr is mg because you know weight is mg lah okay so hence i can say mv squared over r h is equivalent to mg multiplied by a now i'm going to shift the h and a di h and a okay into a triangle so i will have this sort of triangle right there where i have h as this vertical line uh yeah the vertical line here and a as the horizontal line here all right and uh, for this i want to know the angle of inclination so we have to make use of h and a and uh, just just to ensure that i properly see or visually see the the angle of inclination well in this diagram i'm just going to put this stick figure which represents myself as if i'm in upright position so i put this sort of theta right which this line is just sort of the line which i sort of tilt my body to an extent so theta goes in here okay i'm going to use this alternate rule as such so i tilting my body to such extent so it becomes like a shown a diagram so hence i can say well you know tangent theta is always equivalent to observe over adjacent right so let's apply that rule tangent theta is a which is the opposite and h adjacent and then i'm just gonna basically do the math from here so mv squared over rmg equals to a over h just do a bit of cancellation a little bit so i have v squared over rg equals to a over h and voila as it turns out v squared over rg is basically tangent theta so just substitute a over h with tangent theta and hence you get this uh, uh, final equation i don't know if you can see it but i'm just going to adjust this towards this y so what can i say about this i can say this theta here is the angle of inclination so i have to reach at a certain point that if i were to go beyond that angle i would have already skidded okay and then this v squared this v is this the velocity that i need to go to in order to make the successful corner cornering and or just the radius of this imaginary circle i'm traveling and g is just sort of the acceleration due to gravity so there you go that's how you derive the optimum banking angle for me so there you have it that was how you derive this optimum banking angle formula i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i really hope this explanation was brief and easy to understand so at this time you should already understand how does this formula for 
if you like this video give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you'll be notified about my upcoming videos in the future thank you for tuning in and until next time peace yo and stay positive